Welcome to today's video, which is connecting to SQL Server. Now, if you're going to connect to SQL Server, the one thing that you have to have to get started is SQL Server Management Studio. This is a client. Now, if you don't have SQL Server Management Studio, you can go to this URL and locate it. I'm working with version 18.5. Here is the URL to download SQL Server Management Studio. If I come down to this URL or to download, I start the process to download it. It has me save a file and go through the setup. The next thing that you need to make sure that you have is a server. So you're either connecting to a local server so it's stored on your own computer and that's how you set it up when you installed it or you're connecting to an external server in which case you're going to need to know what the IP address is. You're also going to have to know a login, your password, and which database is yours. Now again this is a little bit different if it's a local installation or if you're logging on to a remote server and if you're logging into a remote server it's very much the same if you're connecting to an Azure database instance in the cloud. If your installation is local and you don't know the name of your local server go to SQL Server Configuration Manager that you can see in the upper left hand corner open it up, double click on services, and you should get a list of services. If we right click on SQL Server and the name here and choose properties, I get my properties on the local installation. I click service and the name of the server is the MSSQL server the host name is what I need to be able to log in. When we launch SQL Server, we get this screen. You can see that we don't have anything logged in at this point. We could either paste in the name that we grabbed from the Configuration Manager. This time I'll browse for more. I have local servers and network servers. I'll click by the database engine that's another way that I can find my server I click OK now it's in here is my server name if it's a local install I almost always install such that I have a Windows authentication so I don't have to have a login and a password at this point I click connect it takes a moment and if I move here, I can see that I'm logged in. And there's my list of databases. I'll open the windows to show it. If we're not connecting to a local service, then we're connecting to a remote service. And that's a little bit different. Now, the server type here could be analysis services, reporting services, integration services, integration runtime. We'll choose database engine. And then we'll do the URL for a server. And then I will do SQL Server Authentication. And I'll do my login and my password. Now if I move the screen over here, we'll see that I've logged in. I can hit a plus by the databases and I can get a whole list of my databases. So that's logging into SQL Server under a couple of different circumstances. You can do the same thing to log into a SQL Server instance in Azure. You just have to know the server name and it works the exact same way. So to conclude, we see that connecting to a local 
instance or a local server is different than a remote server. One has to know either an IP address or the name of the server to connect. Also, one must have a username and a password. Also, some people have a VPN or a virtual private network at their organization. So if you're at some remote location, make sure you connect to your VPN before you try to connect to your server instance.